Thank you very much, Marco. So as, as you said, we have decided to dedicate this last panel of um, our World Congress to the topic of open access to science, to, so open access to, um, to science, to data, and artificial intelligence. Now, what I would like to say about it is that the focus for us in this panel is really on the two words, open and science, because following the UNESCO recommendation, um, our perspective on the subject is that we have to go beyond what is traditionally considered in the academic community, so the, just the open access to scientific publications and articles, and try to see how open science can talk directly to society. So, so for us, open science means, first of all, that there, is a wide, there should be a wide access to scientific information and knowledge to people, to citizens, to communities, and eventually to decision makers, so that decision makers can uh, promote their policy in an evidence-based way. And this is particularly relevant for uh, achieving the um, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and is especially important in countries like Africa and in developing countries uh, where, the, you know, where we are still forming and then pursuing and promoting their scientific uh, um, community and because so we can benefit from, from the knowledge produced in the rest of the world, but also can interchange in a very profitable and mutual uh, interaction. So I'm very thankful to, uh, well, yesterday we had a very nice intervention by Professor Garda el Kamar. So I really thank her very much for mentioning the richness of data that can come from uh, Africa. And this is really an example of what we mean when we say that open data, open science can help both uh, sides. Right? So it's really, so thank you again for this. Um, now, I also want to say that open science is necessary for a full application of another human right. So just Article 15 that we've been mentioning this day, so right to science, but also Article 14 on the right to health. So these days we have been talking about the coronavirus spread, for example, worldwide. And it's worth reminding that most of the scientific articles and research on coronavirus family viruses was, was not publicly available. So researchers, doctors, could not get direct access to the articles on the subject immediately after the spread. Marco yes, uh, yesterday recalled that the, even the news was not uh, given uh, somehow in time. And uh, what happened was that a group of activists on the web decided to create a database where they, uh, so is a, is a pirate, a pirate somehow database online, where they downloaded illegally all the scientific publications uh, about the coronavirus. They put it there. And only after that, the major scientific publishers decided to somehow break down the wall, so the paywalls for getting access to, uh, to this kind of, re of research. And there was a lot of pressure from uh, from the community, right? Because this was, in, this was very interesting for the Western countries. But I should also re remind everyone that in 2015, during the last Ebola epidemic in Liberia, uh, this didn't happen. So there was a very uh, passionate article on the New York Times written by Liberian health authorities uh, saying that somehow they didn't know much about the scientific literature written on, on Ebola before that, and the, the, if a doctor in, uh, in Liberia wanted to document itself on the virus, on the, on the disease, would have to pay around $50 for a single article. That's uh, more or less half of a salary, of a weekly salary. So it's of course not affordable. So that's why I want to say that open science is really fundamental for the development of every single country and is a challenge for all, not just for uh, developing countries. Um, I also want to say that open science is not just this part, but it's also a science, so UNESCO is a nice expression, so they say that open science is the future of science and the science of the future. It's the future of science because um, science is getting more and more collaborative, more open, so we need to uh, make more transparent like evaluation and review processes, and this is also part of that. And of course, I could mention uh, data and the, all the um, uh, open research software, open data analysis, and so on. And finally, in our panel, we mentioned artificial intelligence, although unfortunately we couldn't get an expert directly on the subject. But um, it's clear the, the, the link, right? Because when it comes to, for example, the technologies related to machine learning, they fed on very big data sets, and the data sets are 
uh, fundamental for the developing of this technology and are constantly used with, um, are constantly fed with biomedical research promote, provided by governments, medical societies, and also international research collaboration. So it's important to somehow, uh, with this range of applications, which involve ethical and practical and social issues can be addressed. So uh, thank you very much for listening.